uh, hola, the only word that I know in Spanish, and gracias, the later. Uh, welcome to this meeting, and I would like to thank all the organizing committee. It was very uh, nice organization. I, I traveled 12 hours from home to here, and it was a sunny day yesterday. Uh, it is very, very nice to be here. I'd like to be happy uh, to present uh, our experiences here. Uh, welcome. So I will talk about uh, the company that we own, Devinim, and the public libraries project of Turkey. Uh, what, what we have faced with uh, in the early stage in Koha migration, and we have done another migration from version two to three in the Koha later. So this is a big challenge, in fact, because lots of things changed uh, in the new version. Uh, and how we use these experiences in newest uh, installations, like uh, we are started to use in the municipalities libraries. Uh, there are lots of libraries in Turkey. One of them is public libraries of Minister of Culture, it's more than 1,000 libraries around the Turkey. And there are some local municipality libraries. Uh, so we started to use Koha in the uh, municipalities. And we wrote a, a, another application related with Koha. It's a smart inventory uh, system. And I'd like to take your questions. You may ask anything you wonder. So I will be happy if you ask some questions. Otherwise, I will ask. I may start asking the first question. How many of you don't use Koha for the moment, but think to migrate to Koha? How many libraries? One? All right. Then all of the libraries, other libraries, are using Koha. Am I right? Very well. OK. We established tw uh, 20 years ago, uh, and we have just opened a branch uh, in Romania, just to focus on the east part of the and Europe uh, customers. We give consulting training, and we do a lot of software development. Uh, the first free and open source software like Linux, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, etc., we have done in Turkey uh, 20 years ago. Uh, we have 10 professionals, five dedicated to Koha and library systems. Other are doing some other jobs. Uh, not only Koha, but we also give consultancy about this space, aprints, WooFind, et cetera, uh, other library uh, projects. So those are some uh, examples uh, of Koha users. The biggest one is the public libraries, but lots of uh, other libraries. For example, universities are just started to migrate to Koha. The foundation libraries are started to use Koha. Uh, National Assembly of Turkey uh, with uh, four or five branches with more than uh, one, 170,000 uh, books, uh, they are using Koha. And lots of uh, other, we weren't the, uh, the independent Koha users. Uh, some universities you may see in Turkey and uh, in the Turkish Cypriot site. So Koha works on every language. That's why it is started to use ma in, in many countries, in many libraries. This is a Japanese case in Turkey. 
uh, there is a Japanese foundation in Ankara. They ask whether we may store our data in Japanese, and we said yes. We don't know Japanese, but we established a Koha for them. All right. Uh, we didn't start the, in the first stage of the Koha installation of public libraries. The Turkish Cypriot University, in nearest university, uh, made an agreement between the uh, Minister of Culture in Turkey, and they started to migrate the local software to Koha. Uh, there are lots of problems in the beginning. Lots of dirty data, unfortunately, because it was decentralized system. Every cataloger, every librarian can do their catalog, and that's why there are lots of, unfortunately, dirty data in the catalog. And there is a new system. Most of the people resist on this. They don't want to use another system. Uh, this is another uh, problem, and it is because of uh, not enough trainings in the beginning. If, it were, if they were trained before installation and before going to leave, it will be so easy. So I would really suggest to train your librarians first and then migrate to uh, Koha. Of course, there are lots of infrastructure problems. I mean, the servers, servers were inside the Minister of Culture, and there was electric, electricity cutoff or some problems with the uh, center. That's why uh, it was uh, broken the system. I mean, uh, the system is working, but the people cannot reach the system, etc. And in the first migration, the professionals were, were in the Cyprus, Turkish Cypriot case, and uh, it was very uh, far away from Turkey, so it weren't able to, they weren't able to support uh, necessary uh, support to uh, system, so this, was, this is another problem. And the perception problem, how big is the project? The project is very big. I think it is one of the biggest project around the world. I know that it is the biggest project in Koha, but it is also one of the biggest projects around the world because we have more than uh, one million users for the, uh, for the moment. Uh, what we have done during these three years, maintenance of old version. The old version, I mean the two dot version. It was very old. Uh, and we have done a lot of performance tuning on the project, on the databases, on the SQL queries, I mean, on the system. And change, we, we have to change a lot of code specific for Turkish public libraries. They want to customize the software for their needs, so we have changed, unfortunately, we have changed a lot of codes of Koha. I will talk about later why, why I'm saying unfortunately. And we, we have done many modules. The Marnis means we, we use Turkish citizenship number uh, in uh, Turkey, every citizen has a unique ID, and uh, lots of information were collected in the database. So we, have, we, we create a code just to connect the centralized system and take the all information of the people without, giving, without entering a lot of name, surname, uh, address information, uh, etc. They just put the ID and all the information comes automatically. Integration with ISPN and ISSN. There is a local ISPN and ISSN authority in Turkey, and we, uh, we, we, they talk each other. 
just put the ISSN number or ISBN number and get the information from there. Tur module for Turkey Statistics Office, module for Ministry of Finance, integration with we called master acquisition system. So everything were automatized and that, that's why we customize a lot of codes. Okay. New reports, new lists, new statistics, book tracing module, new email and SMS module. Uh, there is an offline circulation module for Koha, but we wrote a new one. We call it Devenim Koha offline circulation. Inventory control system, we changed uh, the inventory control system of the Koha. Uh, we have done some RFID integration. And the last one, this is the most important one, as I told earlier that decentralized system made a lot of dirty data. One book has more than 700 cataloging, yeah, because of decentralized system. So we wrote a script, thanks to Koha, data is open, software is open, so we created a script just to take all the data and merge the best one. Even uh, the history of circulation, etc. So we merged the more than five, uh, 5, 000, 5 million, let's say, bibliographic records. And I think Minister of Culture saved more than 5 million euros by this, this system. They didn't give us so much. <laughs> of course, wrong authorities, misspelling issues, different dif uh, debate classification, etc. Those are the problems. You may see, look, look at the names or the publisher. Those are all same book, but you know, the publisher are different. There is a comma, the small letter, etc. So we started uh, to write a code. How can we find the best catalog and merge the other ones to the best one? Okay. This is the code that we wrote uh, in Turkish. And this is the result at the end. So we collected all the items in just one bibliographic record. Okay, those are the uh, libraries, some of the libraries in Turkey. Done. Public libraries want to share the books. I mean, you are in here, there is a public library, you borrow a book from this library, and you go to travel, let's say, Bilbao. And you may give your book to Bilbao. So they want to trace where the book is and how to collect. So they want, uh, how can we do this? And we, called, we, we made a code for them, the book transfer between branches. Okay. Here you see that this book were uh, borrowed from a library and it will go to, it is on the transfer, I mean. It will go to another library and there is a, if they got the book, they just put a sign that we got the book and they know by this way that the book are in the uh, exact location. Okay. This is the date and time for the uh, transfer. 
And we have done lots of statistic modules. We added, because of the centralized and branches libraries, they want to change the statistic modules. This is one of the uh, statistic modules. Sorry for uh, it's Turkish. Uh, it says that the last, uh, I mean, the most uh, borrowed books uh, in all libraries or in specific library in a period of time. You may just from a period of time and you may see oop, how many books uh, were borrowed. This is the Minister of Finance integration. I don't know the situation in Spain, but we have to give information about the books to Minister of Finance that we, we have this kind of books and the prices are those. So there is, they, they need a, a information. So we made a code and just sent the data taking from the Koha database to send the Minister of Finance. Okay. This is another thing that we added. Last added Biblios. The, there is a centralized cataloging center. Uh, it were, I think, uh, 20 people working on cataloging issues, and they just add many books. And when a branch wants to add an item to bibliographic record, they can easily choose from here and item it area. They add their item to this bibliographic record. There is no more dirty data. Okay, centralized cataloging center, and they just add their books uh, to system. If they have, let's say, um, gift from a local area, just put their uh, some of the cataloging information and send the cataloging center, and they just add uh, the biblio and then add item. Some big numbers. Libraries in the public system is more than 1,100 libraries. Circulation in three years, all of the system, 18 million items. Total active users, it's growing day by day. More, let's say, I think it is 2 million for the moment. Uh, total bibliographic records approximately is 5 million uh, bibliographic records after cleaning, of course. It were uh, more than uh, 11 million, but after cleaning, it dropped to uh, 5 million. And total items approximately uh, more than 16 million. It's growing every day. This is our records. Daily circulation record is 40,000 in a day, all of the system. Daily new user registration records, 5,000. 5,000 people just in a day enrolled the system and get the book. Uh, and daily active SQL records, we are, it's an IT term technology term, more than 3 million SQL queries are working on the system. This is another challenge. After going live with Koha, it was an old version. Unfortunately, the university were using the old version. They installed the old version, but it is very old, so you have to migrate to new version. So we decided to migrate to new version of 3. Dot something like that. It is also old version for the moment. If you are working on the old version, I will really suggest you to migrate to new versions because there are lots of changes in the Koha system. There are lots of new things, enhancements, bug fixes, etc. So you have, 
I really suggest you to migrate the new versions if you are on, in the old versions. We have six months and we have this kind of uh, information and we have to migrate to new system. It was not so easy because in the old version there were 80, 80 tables, in the new version 160 tables. And the table information, the data where the stored uh, and how the stored in the tables are quite different. So we, we write lots of tests, test and correct, test and correct, and then uh, we have done the migration. It's working on the uh, true 3.20 something for the moment. And gone on leave December 2015. This is the infrastructure used in this project. I mean the servers, how many servers we have used. Five intranet web servers, four OPAC web servers for public usage, public usage, one web server for user cards, barcodes, etc. one SIP2, I mean RFID server, just it's working for RFID system. It was for clustered MariaDB database server, but we dropped one of them. It was okay with three. One Zebra server, and there are some other servers uh, for test environment. I really suggest you produce a test environment if it's possible. Do your tests in the test environment, then apply to the production site. As we learned from public libraries, we started to use in the municipalities. This is a pandic municipality libraries with uh, 12 branches. One is cataloging center and uh, 11 for the branch libraries. More than 100,000 uh, items, about uh, 20,000 users. We use just one server and uh, we migrate from local software. I would like to say that the local software for the library system is dying. So every institution, every library are looking for a good, suitable, free open soft source software like Koha. Uh, almost every library, almost everywhere. And we have done data clinic processes there. This is the, one of the libraries in Istanbul. We put something like that. They wanted to uh, slider on the Koha. Since it is open source, you may add anything you want. It is, there is no such a thing in the original Koha, just we put something like that with JavaScript. And this is another model that we have wrote. This is a mobile phone application, mobile phone or, or tablet or anything you want. It's working on Android. Uh, so it is counting uh, inventory system. Uh, with mobile phone. Mobile phone just read the barcodes. Yeah. And then uh, communicate with Koha system. And you do your inventory. Uh, I mean, the, how many books in the library, how, how many are in the outside, and how many are lost. So this is a in fact, it's a smart, smart thing because look here, you may look for a barcode and it looks for whether it is on the correct shelf or not. If it's not cor in the correct place, it says that it should be in this section and in this shelf, okay? 
it's a smart inventory system. Uh, you may also send by email, FTP, or direct con connection to Koha system. Easily scan the books, find the shaft location, etc. Uh, you may stop anywhere if you want and continue where you, where you stop. Uh, it's this kind of project. This is for all. Gracias and <laughs> I, if we have time, I'd like to take your questions. Do we have time? Yeah. Yes. Sí. Sí, tenemos media hora, o sea que tenemos mucho tiempo para para las preguntas. You can see here. Right. No sé si alguien ya tiene alguna pregunta o o me lanzo o bueno, <laughs> Hugo ya está. Perfecto. Ahora te pasa en el primer micrófono, Hugo. Gracias. Hi, it has been a, a nice presentation, thank you. Just one question, is that app already available? And the second question is, uh, are you going to share with the community because it's, it's really nice? Uh, to share what? Share that app with the, com with the community. Uh, share of Koha codes, you mean? Share the mobile application for mobile smart application. inventory. Okay. Uh, the mobile application uses a unfortunately property software. <laughs> so we weren't able to share <laughs> inside. Okay. Uh, we use Java, but because of the scanning the, I mean, the barcodes, uh, we, we have to use uh, another property software. But uh, Google is trying to write a new code for scanning the uh, barcodes. It's not good as the property software, unfortunately. But if they reach the same position, uh, we, will to, we will move to uh, Google uh, SEDEC, I, I mean, right? Okay, thank you very much and congratulations. No sé si alguien más se anima, pero yo sí que tengo una pregunta. ¿Conoces otros proyectos grandes de bibliotecas o redes de bibliotecas que pasan a COA? ¿O habéis estado estudiando alguna para poder realizar vuestro proyecto? ¿O ¿En qué os habéis inspirado un poco? All right. Um, I'm working for more than 27 years in the IT sector. I'm a mathematics, mathematics teacher, in fact, and I've, I've done the science and technology policy studies. I've got a master degree on that, uh, but uh, I think I am the first user of internet in Turkey. Uh, by the internet, <laughs> and if you are curious about something, you may find everything. So we have started to program codes uh, and I've started to uh, work on the computer center of the university as a responsible for library system. We use two property software in the university. In the first software, it, it died, the first company. Uh, they were encrypted data. I mean, if you need some information from your own data, you have to apply for the company just to get your data. So uh, in that situation, I really hate the situation that uh, they want money, of course, just to give our data. Uh, so we decided to write a program, just hack the our data from website and put into another system. So we started like this uh, and then uh, somehow I'm still working on the library project. 
Interesante. Eh, aquí, eh, aquí. Hola, eh, soy Ricardo Chamorro de la Universidad de Cádiz. Eh, primero, felicitarte, darte la enhorabuena por ese magnífico trabajo. Y mi pregunta va en relación a... Que, bueno, primero te voy a decir que en España, eh, en todas las, eh, hasta en las universidades, cada biblioteca era un mundo también. Y cada uno catalogaba a su manera y hacíamos las cosas... Eh, no sé si igual o peor incluso, o sea, no te preocupes que lo que pasó allí no era allí solo, en Turquía. ¿Eh? Y la pregunta es en relación a la formación del personal, porque entiendo que las personas que atendían las bibliotecas no todos estarían cualificados para atender un sistema informático, como coja un sistema, un sistema de gestión ya con una complejidad ¿eh? informática. Eh, ¿Qué habéis hecho al respecto? ¿Qué soluciones hicisteis y qué tipo de personal en, hay en las bibliotecas públicas en cuanto a cualificación profesional? Unfortunately. The public libraries uh, are ignored in Turkey. I mean, there are not so many librarians. They are doing lots of jobs, but in some libraries there is only one person. One person is responsible for cataloging, cleaning, opening the door, heating, etc. This is the situation. And most of the staff are, as I said, are not librarians. Uh, the project unfortunately started before us without any training. They just decided to migrate to Koha and someday they said that you are in this system. This is, this is the really bad thing for immigration. You should first educate, train your staff, and then migrate to a new system. I really suggest this one. Another thing that we, we have to do is, um, since there are not librarians, even if librarians are, can do some mistakes, we try to, I mean, eliminate the errors. They just to choose, for example, authority records from the system. They can't do anything for authorities. They have to choose. And we, we try to simplify the cataloging areas for the librarians. Uh, I mean, in the branch libraries, they are not working, they are not cataloging anymore. They just put some information. If, they, if there isn't any uh, bibliographic record in the main system. If there is a new book, local book that they might uh, borrow, uh, they may get uh, as a gift, for example, they just put some little information about the book and the cataloging center is doing the uh, exact bibliographic record. I really suggest you not to not to use your own cataloging system. Use LC or DVA or, or create a Spanish cataloging system and use this one. Koha is a very well software. You may share your data uh, in your libraries through Z39.50, uh, you know. If some of the university, for example, create a good bibliographic record and share its data, you may just connect from Koha, get the bibliographic record in your system. So I really suggest to use a similar uh, cataloging system.
Hola, buenos días. Me parece una exposición muy, muy buena. Nosotros estamos en una situación muy similar, por eso tendría un montón de, de preguntas que hacer, pero bueno, ya las iremos sí. hablando más personalmente, si no aburriríamos a todos. Pero hay cosas que me, 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 me llaman la atención. Entonces, me gustaría saber, el, el proyecto, en, claro, es ambiciosísimo, lo metisteis en todas las bibliotecas, eh, el tiempo que os llevó, ¿Cómo lo hicisteis? ¿Si lo hicisteis todo de una vez? ¿Si lo hicisteis en fases? ¿Cómo fuisteis incorporando a las distintas bibliotecas? Y por otra parte también eh, dices que no te gusta, pero que bueno que os visteis obligados a tocar código muchas veces por culpa de que bueno, las necesidades de una red concreta como la que tenéis. Nosotros estamos en esa situación y estamos haciendo muchas personalizaciones de, del programa. Me gustaría saber si esas eh, eh, mejoras que hicisteis las subisteis a la comunidad, si fueron aceptadas, si no, ¿cómo ves esta, esta realidad de, de, de hacer personalizaciones a coja? Um, the first question, uh, the first stage uh, were started before us. So they just choose a library in the uh, Ankara uh, and j they just do a demo for migration. They translated a lot of things, they changed the data uh, in the old system and they faced lots of problems. And then uh, there was a limit for the time, unfortunately, and they have started to leave the project, going on leave, uh, with all libraries. But they didn't force to all libraries, especially libraries with good librarians started to use Koha, and day by day they started to use, the other branches are started to use Koha. This is the first question. If I am, is it okay for answer? First question. No. ¿Cuánto tiempo os costó llevar el proyecto a fin, desde el momento hasta que integrasteis la totalidad de las mil y pico bibliotecas? Años, tiempo. Meses. <laughs> All right. The first stage were four or six months, which is very little. And we have only one week when we started to support the uh, Koha. The, in Turkey, every year there is a tender for the, uh, this kind of support and they open a tender, we got the uh, bid, uh, we win the tender and we started to support Koha. We have just one week and through the period, I mean from, from April to December, we started to add new codes that they want. And The first problem was supporting the Koha. It was, uh, the performance was not good. We started to uh, do something about the performance. We started to uh, raise lots of code errors and then started to write new codes. Um, the software project is never ending, so I mean, There are lots of new needs, and so you have to write lots of codes. But after the first year, everything was okay. Uh, but because of the old version of Koha, we weren't able to manage the new enhancements. For example, RFID is not working on the old Koha. We have to move the new version. This also took to six months, I think six months to going on leave. And your other question is about uh, whether we, how can we share these codes? The codes of some, some of codes are very specific to Turkish case. 
I mean, the citizenship uh, connection, etc. So uh, we weren't able to, unfortunately, open these codes. But we are trying to uh, give some codes to the community. We have just started in this version. Uh, we, we have found some security holes, etc., and we, sh we started to share with the community. I really suggest all the firms to share their codes. Uh, but if you want, especially, uh, if you're interested in some of the codes, we may share with you, any of you, and the experiences that we have got. Vale, enhorabuena por el proyecto. Eh, yo quería preguntar, al, al haber en el proyecto más de mil bibliotecas, a ver si hay algún grupo que dé soporte técnico a, a todas esas bibliotecas, ¿no? ¿Algún grupo gubernamental o no gubernamental? Eh, public libraries are connected to Minister of Culture and Tourism in Turkey. So uh, the center um, in the Minister of Culture, there are four or five people working on the project, but they decided to get professional support from a company uh, since uh, 2014. So we have started like this. Uh, there is no local or voluntary uh, support for the libraries. They are all person of Ministry of Culture. I mean, they are paid by the Ministry of Culture, the librarians in the branches. Uh, but there is a cataloging center, as I said, 20 people working on the cataloging center uh, for the moment. Uh, that's all. Uh, hi, Mengu. I hi. would like to ask you about the performance of the of the installation because, as you know, uh, Koa uses uh, MySQL, and that's not Oracle. So, uh, for a huge uh, or for a large um, network network of libraries, it's very difficult to to um, to to guarantee a, um, uh, a very quick quickly um, installation and so on. How did you uh, solve this problem? Okay. Uh, we used MariaDB first, not the MySQL. It is another fork of MySQL. It's free open source of uh, database. Uh, I faced with a lot of performance problem for the beginning. What we have seen, it is related with SQL codes and table structure and infrastructure problems. So we decided to, um, we called cluster database. We, we established four database servers for whole project and shared the load to, through the, those servers. So this is uh, another thing that we have done. First of all, you have to do SQL performance, database performance, infrastructure performance, then it's working. And in the first COA uh, conference I have uh, participated in, they didn't want to, the other companies, they, they didn't want to uh, believe in that it is performance, there is no performance issue, but I showed them that you may easily connect and borrow the books. If you work on SQLs, table structures, database structure, database performance and infrastructure, there is no problem. You see in my slide that daily there is more than 3 million SQL queries are coming to system. Uh, and there is no problem. But, but the problem is about the um, zebra, zebra thing, yeah. So 
So you have to find a solution for ZebraTink and Koha, in the new version of Koha, uh, they are moving, they are, the people are moving to uh, Elasticsearch mm -hmm. and Elasticsearch or Solar will uh, solve the problem. But even if you create a good Zebra server that we have done, there is no problem for the opaque search. Preguntas por ahí. Yo sí. Ah, vale. Sí, sí, no ya. Muy bien. No me quedó claro si eh, las mil y pico bibliotecas que, que están ahora funcionando en Coja, eh, todas tenían ya un programa informático anterior y tuvieron que pasar a, a Coja o se instaló eh, de, de inicio eh, Coja. They were using local software, uh, just one software. Uh, it was regional, uh, there were regional servers for the, some libraries, but they were using only one software, uh, but it was written by a local software company. And because of the enhancements in the library information system, they weren't able to catch the new things so they decided to migrate to Koha. So they didn't start with Koha. They were using another local software and uh, it was done some data migration for the first project. Sí, yo, yo tengo una pregunta también. Eh, es curiosidad, a mí me llama la atención que, que haya una decisión, o no sé cuál es la decisión a nivel estatal, de, de esa apuesta por, por un software libre a, a, esos, a esos niveles, ¿no? Eh, porque no conozco un caso, no es decidir cualquier cosa, ¿no? Que toda tu red de bibliotecas... Eh, circule o se sostenga en un software libre eh, cuando tantas veces oímos eh, que bueno, existe el software libre pero igual ahora está, luego no está vete tú a saber ¿no? cuando bueno, estos últimos años y desde nuestra pequeñísima mínima experiencia lo que estamos viendo es que se está, está creciendo pero a mí me llama la atención esa apuesta tan grande de toda una red de bibliotecas, de más de mil, biblioteca, mil bibliotecas en software libre. ¿Hubo un posicionamiento por el tipo de software o simplemente co a gusto? We didn't decide it. The, the government, uh, Minister of Culture, decided because they used different local softwares before. Not only one, but years ago, another local software and local software company were closed uh, and they had to move their data to another local software and then uh, they weren't able to catch with the new enhancements. So they've decided to, uh, because of not only money that, uh, I mean, Free software is not free money. I mean, most of the people think that free software is without money. It is not the case. Free software, free open software means the, the capacity of free software is capable of uh, adding some new softwares as we have done in the project. The most secure system uh, the most, I mean, every, every month the new version of Koha is going to live. So you may not catch this kind of new enhancements in any other proprietary software. EBSCO is trying to write a new free open source software. The other companies, like Circe Dynix, is just trying to involve in the new system because they see that 
the property software is now becoming more uh, less popular than free software. The property software is quite hard to follow, hard to give support, hard to develop. In the presentations in Turkey, as you may, you may remember that we have five person for Koha, but I say in my presentations that uh, we are developing Koha with more than 200 person. It's true. We have only five person, but we are developing Koha with more than 200 person around the world. So this is the power of the free open source software. And most of the universities, for example, in Turkey, started to migrate from local and proprietary software to Koha. We have done uh, in this week. A university chose uh, to Koha, and they are on leave on Koha for the moment. And let me, let me add something. I know that in the European Union is the same. European Union is focusing the open data, I mean, open software, free software. So it's focusing on the uh, openness. So same in Turkey that we have a Linux version, for example, that we have created. And some of the governmental uh, institutes started to use this free software. Uh, for example, the Pandic municipality case. They were using Microsoft before. They decided to use, in every computer, to use a Linux version uh, of Turkey and then started to change their library system. They look around and they look to Koha and us, and they, we have just installed the, into a Linux server. And since it is web-based uh, system, uh, it may easily uh, adapt to new infrastructure. Bien, no sé si tenéis más preguntas. La verdad es que hemos empezado ya a fondo, a fondo. Si no hay más preguntas, hacemos un pequeño momento de reposo, café. Eh, tenemos aquí en la salida. Os recuerdo que los que queráis hacer la visita esta tarde, apuntéis el nombre en la pizarra. Y nos vemos aquí a las 12 menos cuarto para seguir con la sesión de la mañana. Muchísimas gracias.